A former truck driver and worship singer, Danny Gokey was catapulted into the national spotlight after reaching the final three on his season of American Idol. Danny has used his platform to reach thousands of people with his music, as well as other nonprofit initiatives. Well, I want to welcome all of our campuses to our service today. We love you all so much. We value you, and we're so excited about all that God is doing at every one of our campuses. We have a very special guest with us here today. He is a Grammy Award nominee. He's a Dove Award winner. He is a K-Love Male Artist of the Year. He's a two RIAA certified gold singles, five Billboard number one songs, whatever that means. It's just something really big. Uh, he's a great singer, songwriter, but more than all those wonderful things, let me tell you about our guest. He's a wonderful, wonderful person. You probably never meet a, a man who has a sweeter spirit, a more humble spirit, and he is our guest today. Would you put your hands together and welcome our guest, Danny Goki. Danny, great to have you here. Luke, thanks for being inviting me here. It's been about 11 years. I remember walking out on here right after Idol and being wow. with you guys. And so it was cool to walk back in the sanctuary and see the whole, I knew it was a big sanctuary, and it just brought back, you know, a bunch of good memories. Well, um, last time I saw you, we were at the White House together. Yes. And yep. uh, I said, you got to come do a weekend for us. And you said, I'd love to. Yep. And uh, so here we are today. But tell us a little bit about uh, your upbringing, how you got started, your family life. Sure. Yeah, so I, my grandfather was a pastor. Oh. I have four sisters and a brother. We were raised in church. My grandfather actually gave his life to the Lord. Uh, he was in a hospital room, had an incurable disease, was a man, my grandma said, a man of the world, never stepped a foot in a church, but was diagnosed to die. And he reached over and found a Gideon Bible. Huh. and started reading that Bible. Wow. God healed him. He became a pastor. His kid, My dad got saved, led me to the Lord at a very at a very young age. And so I love how other people's choices, their mm. obedience to God, as simple as the Gideon Bible, led my grandfather wow. to come to the Lord. And now here I am, uh, raised in church, and I'm part of that royal priesthood the Bible talks wow, about. Wow, what a blessing. Thank God for the Gideons. That's what I'm saying. Can you imagine how like simple it was? Like Just take your Bible and place it somewhere. And just that simple obedience that interrupted my family, my generational line. Yeah. Um, and, and saved my grandfather's life. Diagnosed to die, 40 years old, five kids. And it just has... That, that, that obedience has reached all the way through my generation to my kids' generation. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that is beautiful. Um, so you uh, were top three finalists yes. on American Idol. Yep. How did you get chosen for that? How did it all begin? Well, let me tell you this. So it, I was a worship leader at a church. And you know, this is what I felt like I heard the Lord tell me when I was about 22 years old. Um, as I began to develop this gift of music inside of me, I really heard the Lord say, lay down your gift and serve the local church. Mm. And, and I was happy to. I didn't know what that looked like, but I was like, I will serve my pastor where I'm at. I will use my musical gift to hopefully be a blessing and, and wow. encourage other believers. And around 28 years old, uh, or excuse me, 27 years old, my first wife, Sophia, which she's in heaven now, mm. she watched the show. I was working for the church a lot. I actually drove a semi-truck huh. during this time to make ends meet. So I'm no driving kidding. a semi, working between both churches, leading worship. I get DVR and I start watching the show. And I'm gonna tell you, I was hooked from that moment. Wow. And I made a choice right there. I said, I'm gonna try out for this show. And, but here was the, the, I guess, the thing that was holding me back. I said, but I know, Lord, you told me to serve my pastor and he's been a real influential person in my life. He's mm. a spiritual father. I said, Lord, I need you to speak through my pastor mm. and say, it's okay to do that. I know that sounds weird, yeah. but I really, I just, it's almost like you want the blessing yeah, of the father. Sure. And so I went to him thinking he would say no. I don't know what gave me the courage. I said, pastor, this is what I want to do. And he looked at me, he goes, I think you can go very far. Huh. And he said, so you need to go do it. I walked up the office like, well, let's go. Wow, <laughs> you know, and amazing. one month before the audition, unexpectedly, Sophia passed away from a heart condition. Wow. It's a whole long story. But the short of it is, is that I had a decision to make. And this was the greatest setback of my life. But in that moment, there was a choice to make because I had to figure out um, that my choice was going to set up either the comeback mm -hmm. or put me further wow. in this setback. And I got to tell you, I was in the line. This is a very, it was a, a month before the audition. I'm in the line. And I, we had a drive down about 10 hours from Milwaukee or eight and a half hours to Kansas City was the closest city. Mm -hmm. I, I was in line. I would be in tears at one moment because there was about 12,000 people that showed up at that audition. 
And it was a very emotional day, but I went and sang, mm. got the golden ticket, and the rest, it was, a, I guess, stair-stepped all the way to the show wow. and ended up taking third place. Let me ask you a question about yeah. that. So uh, I don't, I didn't watch American Idol, you know, sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> But <laughs> it's so your, your story, your experience, yeah. your heartbreak, yeah. you know, losing your wife, did they ask you about that on the show? Did they ever come into the story as you were absolutely. going from round to round? It, it absolutely came into the show, and it was from the beginning. Mm. Um, you know, stories are what brings you closer to people and helps you understand a person. And here's what my prayer was, because I was, listen, it's a month, it's a fresh month after, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking this, I'm like, God, can you use this? I need you to use this right now because I feel like I've lost my purpose. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've lost my hope. Mm -hmm. I, I'm dizzy right now mm -hmm. and the world is spinning around me and I don't know what direction to take, but I just said, if you want to use it, use it. Mm -hmm. So during this time, I'm, it's like I'm swimming through some really tough emotions, some really tough questions because here I am, we prayed for her to be healed. I mean, we believed God that she would be healed. We had scripture and verse. Matter of fact, we had scripture and verse posted all around our, our house. Yeah. Um, what the word of God says, we were gonna let that be the, the, the final decision. And what do you do when, when he, God doesn't answer your prayer the way that you feel like you yeah. should? Here's what you do, you trust mm. still, because there is no other option, right? right? You, you know, I've heard a preacher say this, always, in every situation, mm -hmm. no matter what, mm -hmm. stay on God's side. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's only one other side apart from that, and that's, sure. that gets darker and darker. And so as I stayed on that side, and I just kept making myself available and saying, God, use this, the producers did pick it up. Obviously, it was, it, it was a pretty overwhelming story for a lot of people to watch. And Wow. As you're telling the story, it reminds me of King David's story. You know, he'd mm -hmm. gone off into... Uh, sin, that's a different part from your story, but, and he lost his child as a result yeah. of his, of his uh, immoral living. And the Bible says he wrapped himself in sackcloth and ashes. He went in for days and he mourned and he wept and he asked God wow. to please save his child that was sick. Yeah. And then he got the knock on the door from a servant and it said, the servant said, your child is, has died. And the Bible, Bible says that he went in and he washed himself. He came out and his face was bright. He was shining once again. Here's a guy who'd been mourning, you know, and asking God and praying for a miracle for, you know, for, for days and weeks. And, and the servant asked him, how is it that you are just in sackcloth and ashes in mourning and now you can come out and your face can be, you know, on fire and, and you, you, can, you can be okay. And, and David said, the Lord gave and he take away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And, um, you know, we, we do a message around here called Life Won't Wait on the wow. wounded, wow. life won't wait on the wounded. And there's opportunities that are set before us right now yes. in life yes. that we will never have again wow. in certain cases. And um, sometimes people can, can miss those opportunities that are set before us right now in life because of the wounds of the past. Now there's a time for mourning, we know that yeah. the Bible says that. But I just wanna encourage anyone who's watching today that don't let, Wounds from your past, maybe wounds from years past, rob you of living your life today or the opportunities that are before you. And that's kind of what you yeah. did. You, you felt that God had given you this opportunity. You move forward. So what was it like then, um, you know, being on American Idol, top three finalist? And uh, what was it like in that moment? Well, in, in speaking about the wounded, I noticed that for me and for a lot of people that I've come in contact with, the, the world of the wounded gets smaller and smaller mm. and hyper-focused on the wound. And what American Idol did for me was it took me and elevated me on wow. this, like a mountain, so, so to speak. Good. And I all of a sudden saw life from a whole new lens mm. and seeing that there actually still was a possibility for not just life, but abundant life yeah. after that. And, and that sounds, you know, some people, when you go through loss, well, that sounds rude. Like, yeah. are you not thinking about, you know, your loved one that you just lost? And it's, you say, well, hold on. They have it a lot better than me. Yeah. My, my wife knew Jesus. <laughs> she ain't missing on nothing right, right now. And right now, you know, they have a whole eternal perspective and they want to see us. They want to see us living life yes. and living abundantly. It's usually our distorted and our ignorant perception and the most, you know, ignorance means you just, you don't know. Yeah. Your most ignorant understanding of what the afterlife life is like. Yeah. So being on that show, seeing this whole new 
world. It's like, it's like Aladdin, a whole new world. You wow, know what I mean? Yeah. And you, they're on that carpet ride and they're flying around. I just saw that. And life, you know, just invigorated me. Mm-hmm. And I was excited again. But it wasn't, now check this out, but there was a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like you said, the world won't wait on the wounded. The Bible says I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life, you know, that you may live and that your descendants may also live. Mm. And I had to choose in that moment because I went through a bitterness time while I was on idol. Check this out. It's interesting what wounds can do to you. They can distort mm. views. And so I'm in this place where now, as I'm progressing through the American Idol stage, I'm like getting a little bit, I'm, I feel like I'm being attacked by the enemy in my mm. mind because there's questions I can't answer and there's pain that I'm, I'm not seeing healed in mm. me. I get to a point where I make it the top 50 in idol and I have, a come to Jesus meeting with the Lord. I know that wow. sounds weird, right? Can you do that with the Lord? Yes, because Jesus is the navigator, yes. the mediator, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, Every time you go to the Lord, Amen, you come right? To Jesus so it is a come to Jesus meeting with God because he needs to be there with me. And, and I told the Lord, I said, if I make it on the show, I'm going to be a mess. I'm mm. angry, I'm hurt, mm. and I can't get over this. And I heard, this is what the Lord began to speak to me. It was out of Psalm, um, it's the be still and know I, I'm God's scripture. Mm. It's Psalm 40, uh, 4610. Mm-hmm. And when I sat down, I said, what does that mean, be still? Because I literally would say, okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do because that other area that I'm going down is getting worse and worse. Mm. And I just started saying, I'm still, I'm still, you're God, you're God. That's not helping me knowing that you're God. When I looked it up in the, in the Hebrew, it said to stop fighting, mm. stop striving with God. Mm. And it said, it said, let go and force yourself to let go. That's when I realized, wait, it's actually not God's fault I'm here. Now it's me and I have a, 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 a heavy grip mm. on this and I need to let go. And I remember sitting at the edge of my bed and I'm just, and I'm picturing myself back at the funeral site and I'm saying, and I pictured a hammer in my hand and while they're lowering the casket, I know it might sound morbid, but it's mm. what I did. Mm. And I just spoke out loud. I said, I refuse to allow this to destroy my future. Wow. I refuse. It's like I had a hammer in my hand. I was breaking my grip. Mm. And I had to repeat this process because those, those memories will come rushing back yeah. and it'll take you back to that place. But I would just reinforce and say, I'm letting go. And as I let go, it's almost like, like that the poison was let go yeah. of my heart. Like someone wow. just pulled the cork and it just drained out. And I'm telling you, I went on American Idol like with great expectation, mm. happiness, excitement. Yeah. It's weird though, but how with the bitterness in my heart, it made even American Idol seem like a chore. Wow. I'm telling you, the heart is a is a is an organ that you gotta protect and guard. Sure. The Bible says that, yeah. right? Well, you know, um, I just went through a you know a big tragedy. I got rolled over by a boulder right. and I had all these scabs that ripped off the, all the skin off my hand here. And that was probably the most painful wow. thing because it just kind of ripped all the skin off. And for the longest time it was a it was a scab. And as long as it was a scab, I kept bumping it and it kept hurting. I'm like, <laughs> but you know, today it's it's really all just scars. And so when I when wow. I bump it today, there's there's no effect. In fact, the, the skin is even a little more, it's tougher, tougher you know, yeah. now. So it sounds like you had a, 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 a from scabs to a scar yeah. moment. And when yep. you finally got there, it kind of released you. Yeah. And, and, and out of that, out of that to this day still is flowing ministry. Like I have a song, Tell Your Heart to Beat Again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I'm noticing when I sing that song, you know, Tell Your Heart to Beat Again, close your eyes, breathe, breathe it in. You know, let the shadows fall away, step into the light of grace. Mm-hmm. This is the best part. Yesterday is a closing door. You don't live there anymore. Say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again. Wow. And there's something liberating where people, we don't realize this, but we have the key that has locked us in mm-hmm. the jail cell. And it's almost, almost like we're recognizing in the moment, oh, it's time for me to let myself go. It's okay to give yourself permission to let go. And that's what I found out. 